anybody who says one thing can fix all of your problems is a quack. Don't listen to them. They have no idea what they're talking about. But the idea that you can just make some simple changes in, in what you're eating and all of these things disappear. I see so many people trying to find one solution for every little thing. How do you explain that when someone says, well, all you did was this and then all these things went away? That doesn't make sense. I'm coming to the realization over the past year or so that there's actually like four or five or six different whys. There's why things work. There's why things have the effect that they do. There's why do you want to do something? There's why is that important to you? There's why does this matter in your life? Like there's a whole bunch of different ways that we can apply the why concept. And I find that people don't apply across the board enough as uh, I think everyone would be beneficial to do. I had Neil Bertram, keto coach Neil. I did a video with him recently and he tells his clients that they need to be four-year-olds about their health and just ask why, 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 and just annoy the crap out of themselves with how much they're asking why. Like if you're four-year-old, because that's really where everybody's at. Be obsessed about the why. It's it's crazy how we can struggle with understanding why we have habits, but then we don't ask why we have habits. Have you ever asked yourself why? Have you ever stopped for a second and asked why? And it amazes me how many people that I work with that I see on a regular basis who haven't actually stopped. They're struggling to understand why none of this stuff is working, but then they've never actually stopped just for a second and then tried to figure it out. Instead, this is, a, you might see this and then we try this. Instead of saying, wait a second, what's actually going on here? What am I really trying to do? Um, I had, I had activity induced asthma growing up. Um, I used to have to carry an inhaler. It's crazy thinking about this because I, I totally had forgotten about this. It mostly went away as I got older um, and, you know, got into shape and, and, and my life kind of forgot I had it. There was a period of time where I had some minor issues with it as I was transitioning into trying to find a good nutrition plan. And it was that cycle of I got into fitness, things got better, but then I never fixed my nutrition. So they got better, but then they started getting worse again. I had to figure out what the heck was going on. That's interesting. I just had to say that because I totally forgot that I used, that I had asthma as a kid. How do those things affect your perception, right, of of your ability, what you can do, and then what you how you can change that? Did you grow up thinking, man, all these things are happening to me? Not not necessarily that my life sucks, but all these things are going on. This is horrible. I don't see other people aren't dealing with this. But then, how do you get out of that to say I can make a difference? I can change it. I can actually be active in the process of what I call stacking information, stacking knowledge. Um, a lot of people are not, a lot of people don't ask enough why questions. Information stacking often leads to, at some point, when enough you, you, you need to take action. I, I got all these things that are going on in my life. I don't want them to be going on in my life anymore. How do I get out of that? Was it um, just going out and doing a ton of research? Was it you found something you want, you wanted to try it, you found this and tried it and then evaluated like, what is your process of, hey, I want to get out of this. I want to change my life. What's step one? I saw I saw a post recently about how anybody who says one thing can fix all of your problems is a quack. Don't listen to them. They have no idea what they're talking about. And without saying it, they were specifically talking about railing against keto in the, in this content. And you know, you know me. I, I yeah, I'm not a label person. Um, I understand the need for labels and how it helps us structure concepts into ideas and gives people a package that's consumable in their brain. But the idea that you can just make some simple changes in, in what you're eating and all of these things disappear. I see so many people trying to find one solution for every little thing. How, would, how do you explain that when someone says, well, all you did was this and then all these things went away? That doesn't make sense. When you're talking to your clients, I think there's probably one other thing that like me as a coach that I'm working with my clients that I would throw into that is, does this make sense with where you are in your journey, right? If I have somebody who's got metabolic syndrome, they got 50 pounds to lose, they can't move and get up off the chair, they've got hormone imbalances, they've got all these other things going on. The last thing I'm, I, where I'm worried about is them researching what glasses they need to be wearing. We've gotten the big things out of the way. That's something that we can add on to optimize down the road, but how more worried about the basics. Hey there, I wanted to let you know about my latest book, Body Confident, that's coming out in September, 2024. Call it a critical thinking guide to your health journey because it is a framework, a guide, a blueprint that's gonna help you understand and be able to filter 
all the information that's out there on the internet that you're getting from social media, YouTube, go to bodyconfidentbook.com. There's things that I used to like, nope, not even going to do. And, you know, French fries as, as an example. You know, I was addicted to French fries. I would have French fries twice a day, every day, if not French fries, some kind of fried potato, tater tots, hash browns, baked potato, something potato, like daily. It took me years to break that and then years of not having it before I can I can go now. If I want to go to breakfast and have brunch, we'll have brunch. I might have some hash browns. I might not. But if I decide I want hash browns today, that's great. I have hash browns and then I don't worry about them until... The next time I feel like maybe I want some hash browns, which could, which could be a week, it could be two months, it could be whatever. But it's a different process for me now than it was then. I can't even have this in the house to, if I have it, I have it. If I don't, I don't. If it's here, it's here, like whatever. I had several years where I would classify myself as an alcoholic, functioning alcoholic. And it took me a while and mostly the education of what alcohol was doing to me. First, before that, like I, I had to first care about my health. Then once I cared about my health and that became part of my, my motivation, learning how bad alcohol was for my health connected those two things for me. And then literally I could care less about alcohol now. Like it is the bottom of the bottom of the things of the list of things I even think about. If people ask me, well, how do I stop drinking alcohol? I said, to learn more about what it's doing. The more you can understand how bad it really is. I think anytime you are spending the, the effort and energy in your life to reach a goal actively and actively participate in that process, your life can't be boring. It's when you don't have anywhere to go, people are worried about things being boring because they need distractions. When you don't need a distraction, that's how you know your life isn't boring. Hey there, did you know that I have a free community on Discord? If you go to discord.coachbronson.com, you can join my community, you can meet other people, you can engage in a group of individuals who are all searching for and having success in finding their context and the solutions that will work best for them. Hop yourself in there, discord.coachbronson.com. See you soon.